Hi, my name is Derek Smith, and I would like to quickly go over an alternative to the teacher-centered style of learning. It is based around using computers, so I'll call it computer-based learning, or CBL for short. The goal of CBL is to have students become independent learners. It is not meant to be the only strategy used by teachers, but rather it should be seen as another tool to incorporate into one's teaching practice. Students will still need traditional lectures, handouts, labs, and activities to complete their learning. I have used CBL this year on my grade 9 science and healthy living classes, but I'm also looking to start incorporating it into my math and physics classes as well. I start my lessons by putting up the outcome from the Department of Education, discussing with them what the outcome is requiring and how we can go about meeting it. Most outcomes are research-based, meaning the student requires lots of information to cover the outcome. Rather than proceeding with a traditional lecture followed by notes, a short discussion on the topic is done to get the students interested and we then head to the computer lab. Once in the lab, the students research the outcome using the internet to create their own notes. These notes can be created using any tool the students choose, but they must be handed in to the teacher to be checked. The teacher checks each note to ensure that the student has addressed the questions in the outcome and then hands them back as either completed or needing to be resubmitted. Here are a few examples of the formats that students have used to complete their assignments. As you can see, some prefer to write or type up their notes in a more traditional method, while others may choose more creative avenues that allow them to express themselves. Most students enjoy using technology and take advantage of Web 2.0 apps like Prezi or Glogster. These sites often have social media aspects to them that allow the students to share information and collaborate. All these options allow students to differentiate their learning without direct teacher involvement. Since they're all working independently of each other, they can learn at their own pace rather than having the teacher try to move everyone through the class at the same time. Students at both ends of the learning spectrum are not forced to move at an average pace, and they're also not singled out in the group for doing so. Not having a teacher-centered lesson also allows students to remain social while working. Here's what a few of my students have said about the classes. Um, being able to, instead of just write note to notes, having the freedom to go on and do your project your way. Talk to your friends. Yeah. Work on it at the same time. And I like that, you know, it helps you remember stuff better. I like it because it's kind of more fun and interesting because we get to find our own notes on the sites that we find. Well, I kind of like it because instead of actually giving us notes, you're actually giving us a chance to look it all up and actually understand it better because, you know, when you give us notes, it's just people aren't going to want to go back and review notes. They're going to want to actually, actually look it up and find a better way that's easier for them to actually get it in their head because notes is just, it's just boring. People aren't going to want to copy down notes. I do like it. I like how we do it because we get to come in and sort of do it at our own pace. But hold on now. Sure, the students are happy, but that does not mean they are learning anything. And I'm a teacher who's all about tests. Just look at some of the answers students gave in response to the questions. And remember, I did not give one single note. I also promise you that I'm not cherry picking the answers from the top 10% of the class, although you can probably guess that from the spelling errors. So let me summarize computer-based learning with some pros and cons. First, I'll start with the cons. The most obvious con is you need to have access to a computer lab that can accommodate every student in the class. I will admit that our administrators did a fantastic job with our technology money and invested in desktops for our computer labs. But everyone should be able to get enough time in their computer lab to at least try this model out for a few outcomes. If you require students to hand in every note as I do, then instead of giving the students one note to copy, you now have 30 notes to mark. In my opinion, the level of retention though is worth it, especially when most of the students will not study the notes we give them anyway. Alright, so students can copy and paste information, which teachers would never do, but you can copy and paste their information back into Google 
and then check it. If you find that it's plagiarized, then you can have them resubmit it in their own words. Now for a few of the pros that I've experienced. Student engagement. I was initially worried and was told that putting a 14-year-old on the computer to roam the internet may not give me the results I was looking for. But with, and I stress, few exceptions, the students work from the moment they sit down to the moment the bell rings. This is probably a testament to what we are all told about the rewiring of students' brains. Differentiation. We all know differentiating makes sense in theory, but creating 30 different lessons for students and potentially up to five different subjects a day is not something you'll get done during your prep. So let students find the site that meets their reading level, or the video that explains what a virus is, or the 3D simulator that lets them build their own solar system. Someone has already done all this work for you, so take advantage of it. This brings me to my next pro. Students become independent learners. What are we proving to a student by running a traditional lecture other than the fact that the teacher has already done all the work? Let's have the student prove to the teacher that they know what they are talking about. And we've all been shown and told that teaching is the most effective way to learn. The internet is the most powerful tool we have for spreading information. We should make sure our students know how to use it effectively. Knowledge retention. As we saw earlier, the test results I'm getting are better than I've ever seen so far teaching Science 9. I found myself having to research some of the students' answers because everyone had studied their own individual notes. And so this goes to show us that the students presenting the information to us is a really effective way to have them learn the information. Collaboration. This is actually something that I'm hoping to develop more in the future. While independent learning is great for the students, they'll also need to develop collaboration skills for when they're in the workplace. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Try out the method, see what you think, and thanks for watching.